Hello everyone, I'm Braxton Miller. I go by at ill underscore mill on Instagram, and this is my in-depth review of the 50mm Noctilux. I wanted to be able to do a comprehensive review of something that has a lot of mystique around it in the photography community. I owned my Noctilux for about six to seven months. I saved up and got one on eBay because I had always been really interested in trying one out. I got it around July of 2019. I no longer have it because I sold it to get the monochrome, but here's a photo I took the day I got it. So I wanted to start by getting straight away right into the review itself and kind of talk really in depth about it and then I will show you some sample images after. The first category in which I'll start reviewing this lens is as a day-to-day -day carry. As an everyday lens, it is a little bit of a love and hate relationship for me. I love everything that is produced by this lens, but I'm not a super big fan of everything else that comes along with it. It is quite large, very unbalanced on an M body, and it's very, very heavy. So carrying that thing around your neck for longer than a few hours can get really tiring. I enjoy a small kit. I have a camera on me all the time, so ease of use and weight are a really big thing to me. And also, shooting with an M, I like to go unnoticed and just kind of blend in. But with the Noctilux, it is a little bit harder to do. I would say overall that the Noctilux fits the best on an SL body, just as far as weight and balance goes. It is a lot more comfortable of a hold in hand. But breaking it down on the mechanical side, it works like a dream. Focus is smooth, the aperture locks in really nice, and it's actually a lot easier to focus on one of the M10s with the bigger, brighter viewfinders. Like all Leica products, the Noctilux was made extremely well. Um, unfortunately, because of its price tag, for me, you're always a little bit nervous knocking it around. And looking at the 50mm focal length itself, for me, I'm not a huge fan of the 50mm focal length. For a day-to-day -day carry, I'm generally a 35 or a 28. Overall, this lens was great to use though. It functions correctly. It does everything that it needs to do at an extremely high level. But for me, it just was a little bit too heavy to be a daily carry. So to really get a handle on this lens, I shot it nonstop for about two to three months and did not take it off my camera. These photos that you're about to see next are from that time period. Next category that I want to cover is portraiture. And I think that this is really where this lens shines. Because of that .95, if you're a natural light shooter, this will really, really benefit you. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use the lens as much as I wanted to for portraiture. I usually shoot a 75 when shooting portraits, so the 50 wasn't as tight as I like to get. As a side note, its minimum focusing distance is one meter, so I was not able to fill the frame as much as I usually do with this lens. The first set of images that you guys are gonna see were outside using natural light, and then the last two were in my home studio using a strobe. So without further ado, here are those images.
Lastly, I want to go over some event photos that I got using only the M10P and the Noctilux. I think event photography and manual focus can sometimes freak some people out, but for me and the work that I do, I don't want things to always be 100% in focus. It adds a different dynamic to the images, a little bit more human-like in my opinion, versus the robotic autofocus feeling that you get when everything is always in focus. I believe that that's why I really enjoyed using this lens for events, and in some ways manual focus keeps me more engaged in what's going on around me. Now, here are the images from that event. So, in summation, I think that this lens is amazing and one worthy of its fanfare and mystique. I thoroughly enjoyed making images with it, but I just know that it's not one that I need in my arsenal. The Noctilux has a lot of amazing attributes, but I just couldn't justify keeping it. I think if I was getting back into the 50mm focal length, I would probably choose an older Sumalux. It would be smaller, easier for a day-to-day -day carry, and a fraction of the cost of an Octolux. But all of that being said, if you love the 50 millimeter focal length and have the money for it, you'll never be disappointed by an Octolux. Okay, so that wraps up this review. Leave a comment if you have any more questions about the Noctilux, I'd be happy to talk more about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Leica content, and thanks for watching.